Look at how God treats you, okay? And um, he sees your worthiness, he sees your value, or he wouldn't be involved in your life like he is. So um, learning how to fail and fail forward is key. Michael S. Gibson, I am so excited for you to be here, and I'm so excited for our conversation. Welcome to my podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. For everybody who doesn't know you yet, even though you are already getting bigger and bigger, especially in social media and with being on so many podcasts, who are you? Would you like to introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about your story and your journey so far? Um, well, I'm just a serial entrepreneur. Um, at 22, I dropped out of school to start my first business, real estate company. Three years later, I had millions of dollars of property here. Um, and then I went into lending companies, medical companies, and it just rolled on from there. I think we're up to 38 companies now. I think my bio says 33, but we picked up five just in the last three weeks. Um, so I've had a lot of uh, success, but I've had just as many failures. That's actually how I've learned all this stuff is just trial and error. It's uh, I've never had like a real mentor or coach or anything like that. I went to all the seminars and that kind of thing, but never really got much out of it. I had to just kind of cherry pick the things that made sense to me and then kind of build my own way of doing things. And um, it's worked out pretty well so far. Um, really, nobody knows who I am, which I'm okay with that. Um, but my team convinced me to get out on social media a couple of months ago. I think we're going on three months now we've been on there. Um, just to talk about what's going on in the world because they thought I had a unique kind of perspective of it and from a game uh, standpoint because all business is a game and the agendas that are being played on the world and have been being played uh, is just a game also. So they thought that if I could help illuminate some of that for people, it might help people uh, get through and, and survive what's coming. So we decided to do it and uh, things are going pretty well. Sounds incredible. So have you always had this entrepreneurial spirit and mindset or was that something you really had to develop over having one failure after the other and learning and uh, growing through learning? Well, no, it's kind of strange. I didn't realize till later on in life, probably in my 30s, that I was just born this way. Um, uh, when I was a kid, comic books were, were big, collecting comic books. And so all of my friends collected, you know, Marvel, Superman, Spider-Man, all that kind of stuff. And the only comic book I collected, and I still have some of them actually, uh, was Richie Rich, the richest little boy in the world. So I don't know why that vi that resonated with me, but uh, it did evidently, and I think I was eight years old at that time. That was about the same time that uh, I started my first business. Now looking back on it, I didn't realize that that's what I was doing, but I would uh, you know mow lawns and and do stuff like that, and saved up enough money to buy a pinball machine from an arcade, and uh, it was one hundred and fifty dollars. I can remember it like it was yesterday, and it was the kind that you you know, play with the, the quarters or dimes. I can't remember what it was back then. It's a long time ago. But all the kids in the neighborhood would come pay to play the machine. And I saved up enough money to uh, get what at that time was state-of-the-art video game uh, Atari. It was one of the first ones that ever came out and, uh, you know, had Pac-Man, Space Man, or uh, Space Invaders, all that type of thing. So I had my own little arcade uh, at eight, nine years old and didn't realize it till I was much older looking back on it, uh, that that's what it was. So that's always kind of been in me for some reason. I don't know why, uh, because it's not really prevalent, uh, in my family. Um, so it's just something God led me on. Um, and it's, I don't know how to do anything else, <laughs> you know, so I don't know what I would do if I couldn't do this. Yeah, I can definitely feel your entrepreneurial spirit and I love it. 
Um, what would you say? Because I personally, I had to, like, I had such a fixed mindset and I really had to learn this the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And I really had to like get out of my own patterns and notice how afraid I was to fail, for example, how afraid I was, what other people think if I fail and all these things. And I really had to reframe it and like learn over and over again, like that failure is actually a good thing. And it's a natural part of growing and evolving and failure is a part that you need to be successful so oh, how did you learn to see failure kind of as such an important part of your success and were you always kind of like heads over heel i just try it and if i fail it's no big Gross. deal or was that something you had to overcome as well oh absolutely i think everyone has to grow accustomed to failing and getting comfortable with it or you're not going to make it uh, if you can't view failure and setbacks as a as a golden opportunity and God redirecting your paths or opening up and illuminating something to you, a flaw in your thought process or your knowledge or how you're approaching things, you're not going to make it in business. I mean, it's, it's tough uh, to succeed on a high level in business, especially to do it for, I've been in it for 32 years now. Um, but no, in the beginning, I resisted it like everybody else because we're taught that from birth. We're taught to run away from pain, uh, to just seek pleasure, all of that, because the people that run the planet and the people that set up these games uh, to keep us imprisoned psychologically know that if we run from pain, we're never going to elevate. We're never going to reach the heights that we could, that God has planned for us, if we're always running away from pain. That's just part of the process. I don't know why. I don't agree with it necessarily. I'd rather everything be nice and easy, uh, but that's, you know, God knows more than we do. So he set it up to where you, in order to elevate and enlighten and learn all the deep lessons that give you wisdom throughout your life, it's a painful process. Uh, pain is just part of life. And the sooner you get used to that and the sooner you embrace it and lean into it, the better off you're going to be and the faster you're going to, uh, uh, to elevate. Otherwise, you're just going to keep those lessons are going to keep coming over and over and over until you accept them, get the gold, get the wisdom, and then move on. Because he can't give you what's on the other side of that door that he wants to give you because you don't have the right information. You're not prepared yet. So if he gave it to you without the wisdom and the knowledge you need, you would just ruin it. So that's why he brings in uh, the pain and uh, redirects you uh, so that you will acquire that wisdom. And then he opens that door. And there you go. Um, so no, in the beginning, it was very tough because I've been on my own since I was 15. So I didn't have a family, um, not a good one. It was very toxic. Um, so God's really all I ever had. He came to me at nine years old and um, uh, he, he was there the whole time through my life. But because of the pain and the brokenness, of childhood, you know, I was self-sabotaging. More people are afraid of success, honestly, than they are a failure because I watch it every day. I give people opportunities. They start to get somewhere and then they just do whatever they can to sabotage it. Uh, and that's out of not feeling worthy, not feeling, you know, uh, worth the opportunity and that kind of thing. And people have just got to learn to start, um, get back to listening to what God's speaking in here, what he's saying, not what's happening out there, not how people are treating you. Uh, look at how God treats you, okay? And um, he sees your worthiness, he sees your value, or he wouldn't be involved in your life like he is. So um, learning how to fail and fail forward is key. There's so much wisdom that I want to dive deeper that you just mentioned. And first of all, I want to talk about, especially the self-sabotage that you mentioned and the worthiness that so many people want to have more abundance. So many people want to have more success, but then they don't feel worthy. And you said that is part of your journey too. Oh, yeah. Like what helped you to like interrupt these self-sabotaging patterns that so many of us struggle with? Well, honestly, it took most of my life. I mean, I'm 54 years old now, and uh, I'm just in the last, I would say, 10 years, <clears throat> gotten to the place where I feel worthy and uh, worthy of love and, and that kind of thing. And that's the worst part. Parents don't understand. People have, have stopped being parents and raising their kids properly. 
because they're so busy chasing money or whatever the TV is telling them to do. Uh, and the kids are collateral damage. Well, as a parent, if you don't instill in your children while they're young and treat them this way, not just tell them with your words, you have to back it up with your actions. If you don't instill in them very early that they're worthy of love, they're pretty enough, they're smart enough, you know, uh, they can do anything that they set their mind to, they're going to spend the rest of their life. That's going to leave a gaping hole in their heart. And they're going to spend the rest of their life trying to fill that hole with negative things, either with other people sex, drugs, partying, whatever, material things, money. It just leaves a huge hole that only that parent can go fix or God can fix. But most people don't trust God enough to develop a real relationship with him. And I don't mean a church relationship because organized religion is one of the worst things that has ever happened to mankind. And I get so much heat over this, but it's a fact. Dogma and rules, regulation, that's not God. Okay, even Jesus talked about that um, uh, with the Pharisees. And I'm talking about you going out to the woods, just you and God one-on-one. -on -one. Start listening to him. Start letting him speak to you because he's speaking. We're just not hearing because we're so focused on what we're being told to focus on instead of listening to that voice inside of us. So that voice inside gets quieter and quieter and quieter while the world the noise of the world and the static gets louder and louder to where you can't hear it anymore. That's when you're lost. So we've got to learn how to turn off technology, turn off the TV, turn off the brainwashing, turn off the dogma, and just go out to the woods and listen to God and start and develop a relationship because that's all he wants. He just wants you to talk to him like you would your best friend, and he will start talking to you. It's pretty crazy, but it it works, I promise. And he'll start leading you where you need to go. You don't need to figure out your path. He's already got it laid out. You just think you're driving and you need to choose it because that's what we're told. It's not the case. You just need to tap into what he's already put in there and then let him guide you down that path. That's what's going to achieve greatness in your life. So uh, in, in my opinion, the how you overcome it, God brought some books. He brought some people into my life at, at pivotal times. Uh, to guide me through certain places, but really until I stopped running from the pain uh, that was in me from my childhood and and then beyond that, all the damage I did to myself and others by being broken, uh, I, I couldn't. I couldn't overcome it. No person could make me feel worthy. Okay, it was either coming from my parents who did all the damage, which will never happen. We haven't spoken in, I don't know, 15 years probably. Uh, and I, I can't, they're too toxic. So it just does more damage. So people like that, you have to cut off and you've got to love yourself enough to protect yourself if no one else will. Because if you don't protect yourself, God's not going to come in and save you from stupid mistakes and from you letting the wrong people in. Because if you don't value yourself enough and love yourself enough to protect you first, he's not going to step in and do it. I'm not saying he won't. I'm just saying that's not the norm. He'll come in and save you, you know, if you're about to, Go off a cliff. He's done that to me many times, but he's not. He never did step in and stop me from letting very toxic people into my life because I didn't feel like I was worthy of anything else. And they did a lot of damage. So um, uh, a good friend of mine by the name of Carrie Black uh, came into my life about 10 years ago and really started opening my eyes to God and the truth of God. And uh, because I was all brainwashed in the dogma, like most people are, um, and, and I'm not bashing churches, okay? I'm bashing the religious structures and rules and regulations and fear-mongering that uh, was put in place back when Emperor Constantine hijacked the Bible and altered it and changed it. And I'm, I'm shocked at how many people still deny that that happened because it's common knowledge, okay? If you do any kind of research and digging on this stuff, it's I'm not making this stuff up. It's well-documented that he did that. So. Um, but God will bring people into your path, uh, at pivotal times to try to open your eyes. It's a painful process to let all that go and have to rebuild from scratch what you thought you knew your whole life. It's tough, but trust me on the other side of that is a life that you never thought you could live. It's, it's pure joy, pure abundance. Not that it doesn't get hard at times, but it's just a peace that you will not find with all the dogma and the, the, the fear mongering and the, you know, all that kind of stuff.
I just, I approach it differently. And I think more and more people are waking up to that fact now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think like looking in the mirror or like going to bed at night and being proud of the person that you are, mm -hmm. there's nothing more rewarding than that. And nothing, mm -hmm. no appreciation from outside, no money, no success, nothing can give you that feeling, <clears throat> that feeling of like, I'm proud of what I did today. I'm proud of mm -hmm. overcoming this. I'm proud of looking at my shadows and all these things. Like, so I think your story is absolutely inspiring and amazing from where you came to the life that you're living today. And I, yeah, I want to acknowledge that because I really, really admire it because like, I know what it's like to overcome adversities and I've had still like a very loving childhood. And yet it was so hard to look at my shadows and mm. to have toxic parents and overcome all the things that you said, like, I really admire that. And I love that. Thank and you. I love that you're talking so openly about your relationship to God because maybe somebody feels triggered by the word God, then you can replace it with universe, energy, spirit, whatever you want to. But it's basically believing into something higher than you. Or what right. does God mean to you? And then also what is helping you to deepen this practice for somebody listening or watching who is like very foreign with that concept? Because I know myself, I don't know, 15 years ago, I also, like, I always knew inside of me there is a higher power, but the word God, for example, really triggered me because of church and because I'm not very in sync with a lot of things that are preached that way. But I do believe in the good, and I do believe in infinite love, if you want to say so. So what helped you to develop this relationship? How, what are your practices or how are you deepening it every day? And yeah, what does God or this higher power mean to you? So it, it's always, it's curious to me why people are looking for reasons uh, to, to not seek God. I don't care what you call it. Okay, how many different languages are spoken on this, on this planet? Okay, this is a cup of coffee, but you don't call it that in any other language. It's something else. So who cares what you call it? Okay, just acknowledging that there is a supreme uh, presence, being, power, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter to me. I just call it God because that's what I grew up with. Um, but I did have to shake what God, there's some crazy stuff that uh, is now becoming more mainstream because of the evidence is just undeniable. There's mountains of it. The same t story is told globally by civilizations that had no way of communicating with each other, you know, 100,000 years ago. And people saying the world's only 6,000 years old, give me a break. The reason they say that is because they don't want you looking beyond that to find the truth, okay? Um, but every civilization on the planet tells the same story uh, about a race of beings that came here and uh, pretty much set up this planet. So God runs the universe like a CEO runs a Fortune 500 company. That's where all these structures came from. They're universal. Okay, so God doesn't go around, and this is going to really piss people off, but I don't really care. It's the truth. God doesn't go around creating little beings like us. We're not worthy of his time, to be honest with you. He has beings that he created that goes around creating other, and we're doing the same with DNA manipulation now. Actually, they just published where they spliced uh, human DNA with monkey DNA. And the monkey, like, exponentially increased in his intelligence and all that kind of thing. It's a very interesting article. So um, I don't want to get into a lot of this because people just get irate when you start talking about this. But I'll tell you the people you can go and get very educated on this. Paul Wallace worked for the Vatican for 30 years. Um, he's a great guy. He's got a YouTube channel. Uh, what's the other guy's name? Dr. Stephen Greer is another one. He just had a documentary come out uh, yesterday, The Lost 100 Years of Technology. Uh, he's phenomenal with uh, the whole black budget programs and uh, the alien agenda that's going on and all this kind of stuff. Who's the other guy? Billy Carson. Billy Carson's a great one. Look up uh, Forbidden Knowledge. For the number four, Bidden Knowledge. He's very knowledgeable and travels the world. Um, 
is if you want to know the truth about God, you don't look at any one religion. They all, okay, so here's the truth about God. The truth about God is a rope made of many strands that are all wound together to make up the truth, okay? Man came in and took a sliver of the rope, a piece of string off the rope, wrapped it in a bunch of dogma and fear-mongering and all that and called it religion. And each one of those want to tell everybody that they've got the only path to heaven and God. It's not true. It's all a lie. If you want to know the truth, you wrap all of those pieces together and it makes the rope. That's the truth. So if you want to find the truth, and trust me, they are flooding the airwaves with misinformation, crazy stuff, so that it's very difficult for you to ever know the truth, find the truth, or discern the truth. Okay, look for the common threads around the planet where all civilizations talk about the same things. I was reading a book not long ago, and it was a book, uh, people don't realize that in the Bible, Jesus, you know, Jesus is supposed to be the main figure of the New Testament. But curiously enough, from the age of 12 to the age of 30, nothing is written about him. How could that possibly be? If he's the most important man on the planet and the center, which he's not supposed to be the center, God is, but the center of Christianity, why is no one saying what happened during those years? Because they don't want you knowing what happened during those years. He went to Tibet. He went to India. He went to Africa. He went to Egypt. That's where he learned his teachings. If you look at Buddha's teachings, okay, they match up literally identical to Jesus' teachings. And Buddha is way older than Jesus. So most people are not aware and they're not ready to hear this stuff, that the Bible was, everything in the Bible was taken from way older civilizations and texts. Um, and uh, I won't get into some of the other stuff because, good Lord, the hate messages and the heat I take for even touching on these things. It's just not worth it, to be honest with you. Um, because all I'm doing is sharing the truth, and it's out there if people want to see it. Uh, it used to be very hard to find. Now it's very easy to find. But for me, it was letting God, and I'll tell you another big part of healing for me, healing my soul, and really connecting with God on the level that I was supposed to connect and we're all supposed to, is mushrooms. Psilocybin is huge. That is medicine for the soul. And anybody who denies it or doubts it has never done it has never experienced it, and you don't know what the hell you're talking about, so keep your mouth shut. Okay, honestly, I'm really tired of trolls coming on my page who have no experience, want to say, I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, how many companies have you owned? How many millions of dollars have you made? What are you doing today to help things? You're just sitting there talking smack on other people's pages. Go to somebody else's page if you don't like what we're saying. You know, I'm just here to help, that's all. So I want people to come to our page and our community in a in a spirit of love and just let's have a conversation. I don't want to argue with people. I don't want to debate. I just want to share what I know. You share what you know because I'm always picking up gems from everybody. I don't care if it's a homeless guy that I just handed money to. If I have a conversation, I'm picking up wisdom from people because they have different experiences and, and perspectives than what I have. So you can always learn from everybody and take what resonates with your soul and leave the rest alone. It wasn't meant for you, you know? But don't throw rocks and hate at people that are trying to share their wisdom and knowledge. We've all got something to offer. Uh, keep getting what makes you, you know, uh, what are your credentials? I wasn't aware I needed credentials to speak the truth. I didn't know it needed a license or some type of degree on the wall for me to speak truth. I think 54 years on the planet, 38 companies own, millions may, I think that's enough of credentials to be able to talk about my experience. I'm not trying to talk about your experience. I'm talking about mine. So for me, the shrooms allows the ego to quiet because that voice in our head, that's our ego and that's our enemy. If you can't defeat that first, you're never going to defeat all the dragons out there in the world and all the you know things, you, battles you've got to fight out there. So you've got to defeat that, uh, that ego first. And uh, shrooms were pivotal in doing that for me. And over time... As you start to heal, that ego voice starts to get quieter and quieter, and God's voice starts to get louder and louder. And then you get to where you can recognize it without shrooms, and you can hear it again, and you can feel it. You know, your gut instinct is there for a reason. 
That's him trying to lead you. And we all have just grown accustomed to not trusting it, not listening to it. Uh, but you got to spend time with him. It's not in church on Sundays and then go about your week. It needs to be all day, every day. And I don't mean all day, every day. You won't get anything else done. But I'm just saying all throughout the day, he and I are having conversations. And, hey, what do you think about this? What should I do about that? Uh, replaying. You know, he, he gives you little inklings, little red flags of, of interactions you had with people. Those are warnings. Those are stop signs. And then we make excuses for people's behavior and things and invite more trauma and pain into our life. So just interacting with him as you would a human being, you'd be shocked at how your relationship deepens with him and how your life will change and head in a different direction. But be careful what you wish for. Okay. Um, because you can ask for certain knowledge and wisdom and leading, but you never know where that's going to go. And pain is probably going to be involved. Absolutely. I believe that we actually have all the wisdom within. I truly believe that <clears throat> books, mentors, speakers, all of these are just there to like mirror back that we have the wisdom within and we know exactly mm -hmm what's right for us, the path that we know. It's just, I think people are so numbed by the media, looking on the outside, like every find trying to find solutions. Most people, if you ask them what they want, they don't even know because they never spend enough time to look inward and to figure out what their heart actually wants. And that's that why I have true. this podcast, because I'm trying to find all different ways to mirror people and to bring people on the show that have all different opinions to say like, okay, this, I like, I totally agree with that. I don't agree with this, but to like reflect on those things, you have to look inward and you have to kind of like see what's, what your values are. What is it that you resonate with and what's your, what is your truth? And that's why I love that. You have such a strong opinion because as you said, like lots of people go like very rebellious on it and you might like get a lot of heat, but I believe this heat is at least causing certain emotions within people to see like, okay, well, this is my truth. Why am I getting so angry if he says this and that? What is it in me that I cannot say like, with like, okay, that's his opinion. I have a different one. We're all human beings having our own experiences. Why, like, if I get angry, that means you're triggering something in me. So that means something is within me that needs to be looked at. And I love that you are such a strong force of doing that, of showing people their inner world and of forcing them <laughs> to look into their inner world and their values. I'm hearing that a lot lately. Um, and trust me, it didn't feel like a blessing or a, uh, my entire life. I didn't understand why such strong it, things I would say evoke such strong emotions, whether positive or negative. Um, now that I'm on the internet, it's more negative heat coming but my tribe is finding us and that kind of thing so you brought up a good point that i want to touch on we're all unique we're all different just like snowflakes no two of us are the same so for people to think that there's only one path to god is absurd and asinine to me it doesn't even make common sense if one size fits all that's why these programs and these gurus out here my team's been trying to get me to create a course and all this stuff to sell, and I don't know how to do that because no two paths are the same. So what what I may be able to do for you to get you rich is not the same that would work for your best friend because your situation's different, your assets are different, your skill sets are different, your experience is different, your drive and desire and goals are different. So I have to tailor make a program just for you. I have to look at all your uh, assets, your liabilities, what your goals are in one, three, five years, and tailor make a program for you. Finding God in a connection uh, with God is the exact same way. It's different for each and every person. So to think if you don't believe Christianity or you don't believe Buddhism or you don't believe Muslims or whatever, they're the only path is asinine and a lie. That's what we've been convinced of. That's men trying to control you. 
by hijacking God, you need to stop it. Get the men out of the picture. They have no place in the picture between you and your relationship with God. There doesn't need to be anyone in between you two. And I'm speaking of Jesus also. Okay? A lot of things were said in Jesus' name that Jesus never said. And those that want to find the truth of that, and I'm not saying Jesus wasn't real. I'm not saying he wasn't a great man. He absolutely was. And he was sent by God to enlighten us. Um, but not going to go further than that because, good Lord, the heat and the hate mail I get and the threats is unbelievable. I can give you the books to read if you want to see uh, The Life of St. Issa, I-S-S-A, is one of the books. That's a very interesting one to start with, to open your eyes to some certain truths uh, about all that. But I'm just saying, stop listening to men tell you how to find God. What man could possibly tell you how to find God better than God himself can tell you. So get out to the woods, shut off all the noise, shut off all the voices in your head, and just listen for God. Give it time. you got to be consistent because the noise is so full and the static is so full of our head that it's difficult to hear him at first. You got to spend time practicing just like working out. You don't go work out once and now you're in shape. It takes time. Over time, you get better at it. You get more and more in shape. So. Go out to the woods once a week and then try it twice a week. See if that doesn't change the way you're viewing things and ask God to bring the right information and connections of people that will lead you to the truth, okay, and free you from all this dogma and all this indoctrination that's been done to this planet and the people on it in the name of God. You know how many people, billions of people have been slaughtered in the name of God? It's sick. It's unbelievable. And that includes the church doing it. Okay, so I just, I have no room for that stuff. And, and people that want to stay asleep in, the, in all of that, more power to you. But it's got nothing to do with me. So, and I'll still listen to you, you know. And, and if you're big into church and you follow it verbatim, great, let's talk. Because I can still pick up wisdom from you. It's not all bad. It's not what I'm saying. Uh, I'm saying men are using it for evil purposes to control human beings. Um, so, there you go. Well, that leads me to the next big, big topic I want to talk to you about, which is money, because um, there are such strong opinions about money, and I believe money is so deeply tied to our mindset. So I would like to love to talk to you about money mindset and how what it took as a mindset shift for you to become as rich as you are. Like, what did you believe when you were young about money and what were the shifts you had to make to invite financial abundance into your life? So I'll tell you a great book that really changed my life that I read at 21 years old was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. <clears throat> so that opened my eyes to the fact that, you know, in, in cooperation with God, because he's already put your destiny in you, you just have to go find it, tap into it, and then, you know, you have to put action with your manifest manifestation. But um, a lot of people leave that out. They think if I just sit here and visualize, somebody's going to show up at the door with a million bucks. You've actually got to get out there and put some action behind it. Uh, and even beyond the action, you've got to put emotion behind your visualization. So uh, one thing I did, I uh, bought my first six-figure sports car. And uh, it's a while ago. but. When I did it before, I remember when I saw the car, it was an LC500. It's a Lexus. It's a, I don't know, they're, they're about 112, 117,000, something like that. So anyway, I went and got pictures of it and felt what it would feel like to stomp on the gas and be laid back in the seat and what it would feel like to hold the steering wheel, what it would smell like. And you literally have to put, and I, I tell people this. Have you ever cried out to God in a situation where you were just desperate? I mean, you were at the end of your rope. The world was ending, you thought, and you cried out in such pain and desperation to God, and he showed up. <clears throat> and you literally could pinpoint where he showed up, touched your life, and changed the direction. Uh, that's happened to me many times. And so... That right there proves, and I didn't realize it till I started diving deeper into Napoleon Hill's writing, uh, that the emotion has to be in there with your visualization and your manifestation. 
you have to have that emotion because that gets your vibration level at a high enough lever level to where it connects. Okay. And then it shows up. Uh, and the more you do it and the more focused you are on your visuals and your emotions attached to it, the faster it comes. So once I realized that, and here's something that's crazy. Um, in another book of Napoleon Hill's called uh, uh, Think or Grow Rich Through Persuasion, it talks about give a specific number that you want, okay? And um, when you're asking, and so I asked, I asked for 300 million. And all I heard inside was yes. That was it. And it was very weird. There was nothing else. And literally within the next month, my entire life fell apart. All of it. And I went through a 15-year period of being broke on food stamps, on not being able to feed myself and my children, just one or the other, and I always fed them. Um, it was brutal. I can't even tell you. And I worked harder during that 15-year period than I'd ever worked in my life. Went through stuff with a rigged, uh, corrupt judge in family court. Got targeted by a woman. Uh, married for six months. Divorce lasted years. Still in court 18 years later. It just ended, like weeks ago, when my son turned 18. Um, it was unbelievable. That judge got kicked off the bench for ethics violations and been all kinds of articles written up on her. Uh, it's just staggering the things that I went through. And I tell people, if you're going to ask for something, if you're truly going to go down this path and ask for things, because we've been taught not to ask for things, that it's wrong to ask for things. That's totally wrong. Can't even believe people buy that. But I did when I was young, so I guess I do believe it. But totally wrong. But if you're going to ask, be careful what you wish for, because you don't get to decide how you're going to get it. And in our mind, we think it's going to be like winning the lottery and the money's just going to show up. No. He put me through, literally, I didn't want to live anymore. It got to the place where I didn't want to be here anymore because the pain was so great and it wouldn't stop. And I wasn't doing anything like bad to anybody. They were just coming at me. But what it was teaching me, it forced me to learn asset protection, how to be invisible so people can't take things from you. Uh, it taught me how to deepen my relationship with him and trust him because he literally took me to the edge and he had to break me. He actually sent somebody to me. I was losing my five companies I had at that time. I was having to sell everything I owned uh, and I owned a lot to just to pay for legal fees and all this. He shut the money off on me. Uh, so the companies all went down during the divorce. And um, he sent somebody to me from Cincinnati, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from here, because I'd put an ad on Craigslist selling all of my, and I used to have just unbelievable furniture and artifacts, uh, kind of like we do now, but uh, just a lot more of it back then. So this guy showed up and he said, listen, Michael, I'm not here to buy anything. God sent me to give you a message. And most people hear that and they'd be like, dude, you're nuts. You know, but I'm used to God doing things like that. Um, so it didn't freak me out. And he said, God has to break your bones and crush you to be able to truly use you. And I did not understand the depths of that at that time because I thought that was my lowest point when I was having to sell off everything I owned to survive and pay legal fees. But it was not. It was just the beginning of the suffering. Then it lasted another 15 years before he finally brought me out of it. And now looking back, it's 100% true. If you're asking for great things, he's got to make you great. He's got to refine you and put you through the fire that most people just... Looking back, I never would have asked. <laughs> if you'd have told me everything I was going to have to go through to get here, I would have said, no, thank you. I'll just go get a job or do something else. It, it's just, it's too much. But we, you know, the, the Navy SEALs talk about this. You don't know what you're capable of until you're pushed to your breaking point. Then you find out whether you've got more or whether that's all you got. So he definitely showed me I've got more. Uh, but I wouldn't wish that pain and suffering that I went through on anyone, to be honest with you. It was tough.
Was it pure faith that kept you going? I didn't have a choice. You know, he didn't give me a choice. I remember laying in bed one day and saying, I'm not getting up anymore, God. I'm done. I, I'm, I don't deserve this, which is egotistical of me to say that because, um, you know, it's not for me to decide what I deserve and don't deserve. But uh, I gave up many times and he would send either a pop of money right then to get me through uh, when I had nothing. Um, or he would send a person in to just give me a little glimmer of hope. But, oh, my gosh, was it brutal. And I wanted to give up. I didn't want to go forward anymore. I really didn't. It just didn't feel like it was worth it. My children kept me going. If it wasn't for my kids and then ultimately Carrie Black coming in 10 years ago, I wouldn't be here today. I would have ended it. It just, I didn't see a way out. And I didn't think it was ever going to stop. After 15 years, you kind of give up hope that God's going to let, because I still knew, I knew even more at that time about business and making money and things that he just would not allow me to make money. He just kept the faucet turned off on me. No matter what I did, it just kept failing or I kept getting redirected uh, into another business. And of course, now looking back, I see what it was all for. Because owning all these different companies, being involved in all these different industries, now I can see how to fix any business because you start to see the common threads. There's common factors that make a business successful and there's common factors that make them fail. So once you've had that breadth of experience and knowledge in all these different areas, it's easy to see the common threads. That's why he was pushing me there. And okay, you got that experience. Now let's go over here and get it in this industry and then this one and then this one. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to start one company, get rich, and go have fun for the rest of my life. He just had other plans for me. Who would you say you said you had to go through all of that to be who you are today? Mm -hmm. Who would you say you are today, right now, the man that's sitting in front of me compared to who you were 15 years ago? Oh, wow. Well, today I fully embrace me as a human being and a person, my good, my bad, my ugly. Um, I don't hate myself anymore. Um, I see why I was so broken. I see I didn't deserve what my parents did to me, uh, what a lot of my family did to me. Um, I was just different than they were, and they didn't understand it. And honestly, they were just playing their roles. So there's no reason. And it all served me. It was all for me. It all shaped and molded me into who I am today. So you can't hate somebody for making you who you are today, especially when you like who you are. You know, it was just a very painful process for me. But I asked for those lessons um, before I came here. Like I said, you got to be careful what you ask for. You can choose the lessons you want to learn, but you can't choose how you're going to learn them. So um, I don't really... Um, I don't resist anything anymore. So uh, the man I am today, I'm a warrior, I'm a gladiator, uh, but I'm also very soft and squishy on the inside. I'm very loving. And that also caused a lot of damage because I didn't want to think there were bad people in the world. I wanted to think everybody's good and I made excuses for their bad behavior and things like that. And I read a book called God Will Make a Way Where There Is No Way written by two Christian psychologists uh, by the name of Townsend and Cloud were their last names. And in that book, it talks about how God will always bring red flags into every relationship that you ever have, whether it's business or personal or romantic or family or whatever. And when that red flag happens, we typically make excuses for it. Oh, they didn't really mean to say that. They didn't really mean to do that. They didn't really mean to hurt my feelings like that. Um, but most of the time, yes, they did. So our job is to go, Hey, wait a minute. God just gave me a red flag. You just said this. It really bothered me. It hurt my feelings or, you know, you're treating me in such a way. It's, it's, it's really hurting me. So I need you to stop and change your behavior or how you're treating or speaking to me or what have you. Now, if the other person goes, Oh my gosh, I did not realize that. I'm really sorry. And I will change that because I value our relationship, and they actually put the action behind the words, then you continue on down that path with them on that relationship, no matter what the relationship is. However, 
if that person says, puts it back on you, gaslights you, blame shifts, you know, says you caused it, um, uh, unless you did cause it, you know, be honest with yourself about your own behavior as well. But those people are never going to change. They're not out for your best interest. And if you allow them to stay in your life, you're just inviting more pain and suffering and damage. It's going to take you years to undo. So it's what I keep telling everybody. You've got to love you first above everyone else in your life. I don't care who it is, children, family, friends, uh, romantic, really, it does not matter. You love you first and protect you, set up healthy boundaries. Or there's not going to be anything of you left to give the good people that do come up into your life. And I've done that firsthand. I was so ripped to shreds and destroyed mentally, emotionally, spiritually by letting the wrong people in because I didn't think I deserved any better. That when good people came, I sabotaged it, you know, because I was so broken and broken people hurt people. So you've got to protect you and keep you healthy and whole so that when the good people come, you've got something of value to give them because they deserve that. And you deserve that, honestly. Nobody deserves to get treated like shit and, and broken and hurt. Um, find people that make you feel better, make, make you want to be a better person and make you feel good when you're around them. People that make you feel very bad. Now, here's another thing. We also have to be very honest with ourselves because you could be doing very toxic things and people are telling you it's you and you're going, oh, it's all them. Typically, if everybody else is saying you're doing something and you're denying it, you're in denial. So you need to be honest with yourself also. Um, so it's a it's a honesty thing, really. And and love yourself is is the basic core of everything. Love yourself. I don't care how your parents treated you. You didn't deserve to be treated like that. You were a child. What could you possibly have done? Even if you were a bad kid, you're a kid. Okay, so start there because until you heal, taking drugs, taking pharmaceutical crap to deal with depression and all that garbage isn't going to fix anything. It's masking the symptoms. Until you go back and heal the underlying wounds, you're never going to be okay. And I don't care how many damn drugs you take to mask it, it ain't going away. It's always going to be there. That's why they feed you the drugs. They know this. The pharmaceutical companies know the 13 families that own every company on the planet, the real companies, know this. They know that if you heal the underlying uh, the underlying root cause of the pain and the wound, you don't need all that garbage. That's why they don't push healing the underlying problems and wounds. They just want you to pop a pill. This is why I'm doing my podcast, because I want to empower people to heal themselves and to get the tools and the different ways how they can heal themselves because i believe in the end the outside world anything can happen it's on us we still have the power of what's going on in our lives and if we look inward if we heal all the things that need to be healed they will reflect on the outside just like you did with your money your financial situation just like you did with your mindset with the fear of failure and before we wrap up, I would like to ask you, you told us so many stories and you obviously lived like 10 lives in one and you have so many amazing like journeys and stories and probably so much more to dive in. But what would you say are like, in essence, the most important lessons that you learned? Oh, wow. Uh, one, you don't need other people to have a relationship with God. He's just waiting on you to make the first move. He's not going to chase you. He's going to be right there beside you the, your entire life. But until you make the first move and and put some effort into that relationship, you're really going to miss out on what you could experience in this life. Um, the other thing is love yourself above everything and everyone else and protect your heart. Because if you don't have that, you've really got nothing to offer people. Um, and the next is, um, really, there is no limits for you as a human being. You can achieve anything and everything. And if people knew how easy money is to make, they would be shocked. Because we've all been lied to about how you accumulate wealth, 
about how you go about, uh, you know, uh, accumulating assets and all this type of thing. You don't need money to do it. You don't, you need information and um, uh, the right connections, people that know how to monetize these things. Uh, our teams, our companies do all of that. Uh, I'm not promoting my companies. There's other people out there, so I don't care who you find. Just go find somebody that knows things on a level that you want to be doing them and get connected with them, play a role, okay? We've got people moving here from other states to come join our company after they get on calls with us or the free Zoom classes or whatever and see what we do. They're moving from other states to get involved in our companies. It's pretty crazy what's going on right now. And social media is a big part of that, so I'm, I'm really glad they talked me into getting on there. Um, but trust this voice inside. But first, you got to go find that voice. And you can't do it watching TV, listening to music, all that stuff, all the noise and distractions. Uh, get out to the woods, just spend some time with God and see what happens. That's beautiful. Michael, for everybody who wants to get in touch with you, who have a nice, honest conversation about things that you shared, about everybody who wants to learn how easy it is to make money, everybody who wants to prep for the times that are coming ahead, where can we find you? How can we connect with you? And yeah, just let us know how can we find you. So it sounds really weird, but I don't know because of the teams do all that. Uh, where can they? Um, you can find us on Instagram at M Gibson official. You can find us on YouTube at Michael Gibson rumble, um, TikTok, Michael Gibson official. And, um, I think that's it right now. Okay. We're launching new platforms. As we show notes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I will link everything in the show notes so everybody can find you for sure. Everybody like can look at your content, see all the messages that you are sharing and maybe also reach out to you and to share what they learned through your conversations and how maybe you opened up a certain worldview or world that or opened something up for them that to see or to question their worldview, their current worldview and what they're believing right now. And most importantly, to empower them to create a life on their terms, like their dream life, whatever that may be. I agree. I agree. Thank you so much for having me on. I really enjoyed it. It was great talking. I'd like to do it again sometime. I would love to. I would love to dive deeper. You have so many amazing stories to share. And once again, from the bottom of my heart, a big thank you to you for being here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Now, I would like to know from you, what was your biggest takeaway and how can you put it into action starting now? Leave a comment below or hop over to Instagram at Hannahwiz underscore and leave a comment under the post of today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and never forget to shine your light.